In this series where I talk about New Zealand politicians, I've only talked about modern politicians. So I thought I'd do a quick rundown on a very old MP, someone from back in the 1800s. This MP served in the 6th Parliament of New Zealand, and it's quite interesting. So today we're talking about William Larnick. I can smell the uranium on it as you lean towards it. <laughs> Okay, Boomer. We have the most enormous big gay rainbow across my electorate. They're not going to win an election. Let's keep moving! William Larnick was born in Sydney in 1833. He married his wife Eliza, and they both moved to Dunedin, where Larnick became the head of the Otago Bank. He became a very wealthy man through his speculation on land and his investments in timber and farming investments. In 1873, he constructed this massive mansion that he called the Camp. Today, this building is known as Larnick Castle and is advertised as the only castle in New Zealand. Because, you know, we don't have a medieval history or anything like that. In 1875, he tried to get into politics, running in the Cavisham Dunedin electorate but he was unsuccessful in that by-election. But later that year, he ran in the general election and won a seat to represent the city of Dunedin. Now, at this time in New Zealand politics, there wasn't any parties, so Larnick was an independent MP, not associated with any specific party. And at this time, being an MP wasn't considered a full-time job, so MPs were doing this job as a side hustle and still running all their businesses and all that, so it was very corrupt. In 1877, Larnick orchestrated a vote of no confidence to unseat the current Premier of New Zealand. Premiers were what we used to call the Prime Minister of New Zealand. This man called George Grey was instituted as a new premier, and he was actually one of our first premiers in New Zealand, and he, he was in and out, in and out a couple times. For supporting Grey in this position, Larnick was made treasurer of New Zealand, which is what New Zealand used to call the Minister of Finance back in the day. As treasurer of New Zealand, Larnick was sent to England to acquire a government loan. The real reason he was there is he was doing some shady dealings. He was trying to sell on some of his failing businesses to unsuspecting British investors who didn't know the current situation of the books of those businesses. He kind of got caught out of this and kind of got into a bit of trouble. When he returned from England, he didn't seek a second term. Disgraced. Larnick became a recluse, drinking heavily, becoming a massive alcoholic, just becoming a shut-in in his mansion. His investments went to ruin and he lost everything. Well, almost everything. He secretly put his castle and some of his other assets in his wife's name, so he was able to keep that when he filed the bankruptcy. His wife Eliza died in 1880, and Larnick constructed this massive mausoleum in this Dunedin cemetery. This mausoleum was designed as a small-scale replica of the famous First Church of Otago. In 1882, he married his wife's sister, who actually died in 1887, who he buried right next to his first wife in the mausoleum. Then he remarried for a third time in 1881. For a brief time, him and his family moved over to Melbourne, Australia, but his investments didn't pick up there either, and he moved back. In 1882, Larnick returned to Parliament, and by 1885, he was made the Minister of Mines. But the real reason he came back into politics was to lobby the government to help him out with his shitty agricultural companies. He was so corrupt. He was briefly out of politics for a term, but he came right back again as a member of the Liberal Party, just as political parties entered New Zealand politics. Now you're probably asking yourself, why the hell are you telling me this, Shay? This guy just sounds corrupt and boring, and from over 100 years ago. Why is he interesting? Well, alright, hear me out. The real interesting thing about William Larnick is the fact that in 1894, he locked himself in a meeting room in Parliament, and he shot himself with a revolver. Now the reasoning for his suicide is a bit confusing. Some people speculate that it's for his financial situation, but some speculate that he actually committed suicide because his wife was having an affair with his son. The theory was actually outlined in this famous book in New Zealand by Owen Marshall called The Larnicks. You know, it's right here, I got it from the library. <laughs> and it says in here, alright, so it's it's not really about Larnick, like it's more about the, the love affair between the wife and the son, but it says right here, this little bit right here, Wednesday the 12th of October 1898 was the day hell burst open for me. William had killed himself. That's all that's in this book about him committing suicide. This is such an interesting story, and they brush over in a couple sentences. Ridiculous. William Larnick was laid to rest in his monstrosity of a mausoleum, which is still standing to this day, but sadly because it's so big and extraordinary that it gets vandalized constantly. There are a lot of rumors around this mausoleum, saying it's haunted and all that crap. There's actually rumors that this castle is also haunted. I don't believe in any of that crap, but there was some ghost hunting show that actually talked about the castle. It's kind of interesting. Think about it, and the tragedy behind this. Larnick was... He was wealthy, he had a great family, he was a, a yeah, promising politician, yeah, mm -hmm. and he built the castle in 1871. And it all went downhill, didn't exactly. it, really? Exactly. In 20 years, he, like, his two wives died, his favourite daughter died, he ended up um, committing suicide after going bankrupt. Then his, his son committed suicide 12 years later. After supposedly sleeping with his third wife. Oh. Yeah. It is so steep in Not history. a pretty, particularly happy life or cheerful, really. Oh, those lions look like they're yes. watching it. The evidence from this place is just overwhelming. Oh, I've got the bajiggities. 
Bism is just such a ridiculous story, I just want to talk about it. So a little quick video about this man, William Larnick. You know, what do you think? The only MP that I can find that died in Parliament, and by suicide no less. 